Patrick Lefebvre, cycling's old deep throat, claimed that Primoz Roglic had paid money out of his own pocket to leave the Visma team in order to join Bora for the next few seasons. A move that ended with Rabobank retaliating by striking a deal with Kian Eiderbrooks and robbing Roglic of one of his best potential acolytes for the 2024 season. Many YouTube channels claimed it was the perfect move for the former skier and that the Giro d'Italia champion could now try to challenge for the Tour de France at the tender age of 34, butting heads with the dictatorial Danish anchovy. Big mistake. Roglic had prepared thoroughly on the Canary Island volcano of Tede for weeks over the winter, just as he did in his Yumbo years, and he displayed a fine fit figure, even claiming that his warts had improved with such training. But in spite of everything, he has failed miserably in his first competition of the year, Paris-Nice, where he finished 10th overall, 5 minutes and 33 seconds behind the winner. Coincidentally, his replacement in the Visma team, Matteo Jorgensen, a simple Gregario of Jonas Vingegaard, whom he says he wants to win in the Tour de France. This whole situation raises many questions and controversies. But let's go to the beginning of the downfall of Primoz Roglic, just after he won the 2024 Giro d'Italia, with a teammate doped to the gills. After winning the pink jersey in less than stellar fashion against a 38-year-old geezer, Roglic talked to the Rabobank management about joining the Tour de France team alongside Jonas Vingegaard. He didn't demand the leader's stripes, but he did want to be the Dutch team's plan B in the fights against Poggy in the Grand Boucle as if he needed more minutes of attention in the Jeff Bezos-sponsored documentaries. Richard Plurgel started laughing in the Slovenian's face like he was a one-cycling Super League hater and told him that, at best, he could go to the Vuelta Espana, his fetish race, as leader of the Yellow Bees. Reluctantly, Primoz agreed, but deep down he was embroiled in another personal issue against his team. Roglic was suffering from the Scotty Pippen effect. Like the three-legged basketball player, the Slovenian had signed a multi-year contract with the Rabobank team for a salary of $1.5 million. Much lower than other stars in cycling, and certainly lower than the people in his team like Wout van Aert or Jonas Vingegaard. They were earning far more, even though Primoz had been the world number one until 2022. Now, I'm not going to be the one to criticize Roglic for being angry especially after seeing that while he was winning a Liège, two Vuelta Espana and one Giro d'Italia among the other great World Tour victories, Chris Froome was earning 15 million euros for making a fool of himself, and Peter Sagan 18 million euros for winning small stages in Switzerland and Slovakia. However, at the Vuelta Espana, the problems returned. The Tour champion wanted to continue his faithful commitment to Omari Sports in the same way he's continued his faithful commitment to his beloved wife. And so he was added to the Jumbo team roster for the Spanish race. The Dutch swept the field, but not with Roglic as the visible head, but rather with an unexpected man, the gringo Sepkus, who initially started as a simple domestique, but now wore the red leader's jersey. Although Roglic won two stages on the goat slopes of Saret de Cati and Angliru, finishing behind Kuss and JV and that strange Vuelta made him want to look for a new team. And he went, in principle, to a good team. The Bora team, which tripled his salary so that he could finally earn what he deserved, 4.5 million euros a year. Or at least that's what it looked like. Roglic was euphoric in his first statements with his self-confessed doper boss, Rolf Aldag. And although he had now given up ketone shakes, he was delighted in his new German team, claiming that with them he could win the 20 races he wants to win and does not yet have in his Palmares. The main one being, evidently, the Tour de France. Very close to his tax haven full of casinos and boats and Formula One cars. Roglic thought that he was joining a team where all the big men were going to ride with him in his absurd attempt to get the yellow jersey. From Grand Tour winners like Jai Hindley to great climbers like Daddy Daniel Philippe Martinez. Or the suspicious man of no known nationality, Alexander Vlasov. And yet the latter has already taken it upon himself during the first day of competition in Paris-Nice to say that it would be the road which would tell who is the fittest rider in the team and who should be worked for. 
Again, Aldag didn't know how to manage this titanic struggle within the team, just as he did when he shared a doping stable with friend of the channel, Bianna Reese and the strangling whoremonger, Jan Ulrich. And the lack of chemistry was quickly apparent from the start of Paris-Nice. For proof, we can start with the disappointing team time trial performed by Bora with the specialized sock helmet that has fortunately already been banned by the UCI. An 11th position where we saw Rogler striving as always, but without the expected collaboration of good rulers like Bob Jungles or Marco Haller or Matteo Sobrero, and logically without a Vlasov who worked himself to death in the interests of number 41. The mountains would dictate the prophecy of the former Russian. When, on the first day with orographic difficulties, that's mountains to you and I, the winner of this race in 2022 attacked unconvincingly far from the finish, desperately seeking to cut time on the general classification. But 15 seconds later, he was back in the bunch, and even in the uphill sprint, he couldn't get ahead of a not very fast guy like Remco Avenepoel. Even more laughable was his role in the high finish and the even more, more laughable, very short 90 kilometer stage shortened by snow at La Madone du Tel. On a day that didn't go too quickly, with times similar to when there weren't so many technological advances in bikes, as our beloved Danish Anchovy likes to tell us, Alexander Vlasov attacked Roglic and the others and took a stupendous stage win for himself while his supposed leader rode across the finish line without celebrating the victory for the team. A brilliant atmosphere, similar to that breathed by John Terry and Wayne Bridge in that legendary Chelsea football team of whoremongers. But the best was yet to come. While Matteo Jorgensen was able to follow the almost 7 watts per kilo of Remco Evenepoel for 50 kilometers in a breakaway and the last stage of Paris-Nice, proving that Visma's ketones are still the best and are able to turn a good Movistar rider into a real winner of world tour races, Primoz Roglic was totally unhooked, throwing in the towel as we haven't seen him do for years with a slower time than those of Alberto Contador in 2017 or Narito Quintana in 2019. And not only that, Alexander Vlasov was able to follow the Belgian kid and the stubborn gringo until the last climb where he could do nothing more. Roglic arrived more than four minutes behind the Pizza Hut delivery boy, and it became very clear that it is not only because he is 34 years old and Jorgensen 24. It's also difficult to believe that a man with his level can be the leader of the German team for the Tour de France, especially after the great performance of Jai Hindley in Terreno Adriatico or Vlasov himself in Paris-Nice, where he directly said, we came with Roglic as leader and we did the best we could. Rogler, the excuses about not liking the cold, <laughs> despite being a skier, don't really work anymore. Before you try to be the leader of the Tour de France, at least become the leader of your own team. Unless, of course, Red Bull suddenly comes along and gives you the wings you desperately need. You know, we wouldn't be surprised.